ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Weedy Wednesday's Comedy Night. Please welcome to the stage your hilarious MC, Miss Allison Smith. Oh! Woo! Look at that! Holy fuck, what's going on? Wow, that's tremendous. Right on. Well, I want to I wanna welcome everyone to Weedy Wednesday here at the Vapor Lounge. Good times. What's up? Every, you guys are attentive. Look at you're all perky. That does not happen all that often in this room. I'm just going to take it in for two seconds. This is a treat for me. What's up? Hey. All right. Uh, what's up? A whole group of girls. Look at there's like so many girls down front. That's what I like to see at a weed show. I'm not going to lie to you. That's a good, forget bros before hoes, it's ginas before winas. Yeah, that's awesome, thank you. You gotta have a bit of energy at the beginning of the show, right? Uh, you guys came out on a great night. Listen, here's the exciting part. Um, Brian, who hosts the show tonight, uh, I, he might show up, because it's Weedy Wednesday, and it doesn't always go as planned, but we are happy the way that it works out, right? That's what happens in a pot room, because it's all about now. <laughs> it's all about now. Uh, your headliner tonight, a personal good friend of mine, actually, uh, this is his first time here, everyone, and I brought him down here, and I'm so excited for him to experience this room. This doesn't happen anywhere else except for in Toronto, ladies and gentlemen, worldwide. There is no comedy show where you can have a good time at the same time. So, uh, your headliner, Mr. Mark Bennett. Give it up for Mark. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting. This is great. Uh, my name is Allison. Uh, I am so glad to be here. I am from uh, Calgary, Alberta, and I moved to Toronto. Toronto is one of my favorite cities that I will ever live in again. Right now, I live in Manchester in the UK. Fucking thank you, exactly. Even people at Manchester are like, why did you move to Manchester? I was like, oh, I don't know, I've never had my purse stolen. That's what happens, it's like a place where like thug crime happens. I'm Canadian, I had my purse stolen, I was like, oh sorry, have a nice day, you know. My instinct was to still be nice. That's when I learned my first language uh, difference between the United Kingdom and Canada. This is my first lesson, this was so fun. After I had my purse stolen, I was like, well, this will not happen to me again. So I went out to buy what we call here in Canada <laughs> a fanny pack. Some of you know, yeah, thank you. Fanny uh, in the UK, didn't know, means vagina. Uh, you should have seen the look on the guy's face at the cell phone shop when I told him I was going to put my new phone in my fanny pack. <laughs> right? I was like, everything I own is going in my fanny pack from now on. He looked me right in the eye, he was like, I'd like to see that. <laughs> I'm gonna suck her 20 pounds. Okay, uh, I'd say $20 for Canadian, but I was in England, and I am not too stoned to not remember that fact. Thank you very much, everyone. I, I'm giving myself an applause on that. Welcome, come on in. Uh, so I'm so glad you came out, this is great. I'm so pleased to be here. This is my fa one of my favorite rooms to do. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be emceeing, I'm not going to lie to you. And usually I take it as like a personal challenge whenever a show happens. I was like, all right, if I'm going to do a show at Woody Wednesday, then my goal is to like beat my own personal best. So I kind of smoke as much as possible before I know I'm up on stage. I'm a little off tonight because I thought I had more time. I get better with time. I'm going to say that. Is that bold? That's too bold. I shouldn't say that, right? I accept that challenge I gave to myself. Okay. Um, you guys are great. Hey, more people. What's up? What's going down? All right. I won't be too badly. I do apologize. I spend a lot of time with my grandmother. She's 94 in Manchester. 94. She's losing her short-term memory. I was like, no, I feel like I have a lot in common with you. I'm 36 and smoke a lot of pot. I love you. Like, we're in the same. It's fine. I don't care. I forget words. Does anyone forget words? I admit it. Sometimes I'm like, ah, I just, it's not that I forget them, I just can't be bothered to remember them all the time. Certain words, simple ones, right? And when I can't remember a word or I don't want to say a word, I replace it by, by saying shit or blah, blah, blah. 
I do it. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend was at my place. I was like, it's been so nice lately. I've just been keeping the shit open. And she was like, yeah, by shit you mean window. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just keep this shit open and the blah, blah, blah blows through and cool shit down. Thank you. Th see? After laugh at the back. Thank you. That was tremendous. All right. That's good. I'm desperately trying to uh, think of more things. You guys are probably the nicest crowd I think I've ever seen at this Vapor Lounge right now. You look at how friendly you are. It's ridiculous. Sorry, I don't mean to be pumping you up. I'm not, I'm not even kissing your ass right now down front. You're a nice group of people. How many people in this room? Can I ask this? I always want to know. How many people are single? This is an interesting... How many people in this room? Single people? I know we're not a meat market here, but are there single people? No, I just like asking because I like the response, right? There's two types of single people. Those are like, woo, and then the other ones are like, yeah, living the fucking dream right over here. <laughs> so it's good, woo. I think it's good timing, single. Let's, Because here's the thing. This is what I think is fun. You're only single for so long in your life, right? And it's exciting when you're single because you get to wake up every day and you're like, oh, today could be the day, you know? Love could be around any corner. When you're in love, you wake up every single day, you're like, oh, there's the fucking corner again. Okay. Thank you. I'll take after giggles. You guys are great. This is great. Um, I uh, lived in Vancouver for a year, which was one of my favorite places to live. Uh, one time, uh, I took a bus. I took a Greyhound for 10 hours, and after 10 hours of taking the bus, I decided to myself, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna smoke a joint the moment I get off this bus. And there was a group of teenage boys and I was like, I'll just blend in with them, right? No one's gonna fucking think it's Sarah Palin, you know, so. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that, I appreciate that. Or Ricky Lake, I'll be fucking honest. It could be a little Ricky Lake, it could be, couldn't it? Come on, I know, fucking. Ricky Lake is the best talk show out there though, I'm gonna say that for a fact. I'm gonna put that out there as a fact, thank you. Because here's the thing, this is what Ricky did that all the other talk shows didn't do. All the other talk shows were all like, eh, my daughter's a slut, da, da, da. Uh, Ricky would have on the daughter, so she could be like, my mom doesn't understand, I need to be a whore. You know what I mean? Like, she provided them a podium to... Okay, never mind, all right, I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's really sweet of you, thanks, see? That's nice, thanks. So, that's great. We're all great. Hey, everything's good? Solid. Um, thanks, I appreciate that. I like the woos from it. I've never understood, this is what I think is interesting too, being a member of the audience. People clap sometimes. I like woos. I think woos are easier. Clapping's like, oh my God, two fucking hands. A so woos like, woo, and then you're doing whatever you need to do more often. That's great. This is good. All right. Um, the other reason I like being in the UK, hmm. I feel like I'm not following some etiquette right now, right? I'm like, there's nowhere to ash. Do I just ash on the floor in front of all these people? That's <coughs> live in the moment, but I'm a little put off right now. Like the polite thing to do, right? You're like, just ask on, uh, she told me to ash on the floor. I'm doing it because she said it. What's your name? Tova, Tova was like, T go for it. It's A1. <laughs> Everyone else would ash on the floor. Nobody would even have thought of that, right? But I'm like, so anyway, oh my God, what's the proper etiquette in this fucking situation, right? That's what I want to think about, because I'm sure this has come up before for a lot of you. When have I been on stage and needed to ash? Common thing. Maybe if you're an exotic dancer, maybe there are places in the world where moments like this have happened. You're into exotic dancers. Uh, be into them. Girls are good. Girl exotic. You ever see dude exotic dancers? It's the worst thing ever. Uh, it's the most unsexy thing. They can't dance. They just kind of like do a back step move. That's all they do the whole time. They're like, you like that? I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, Both my feet work, does that turn you on? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> ask me how my fucking day is. All right. Um, well, I think, I think, have I babbled? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been close to 10. I think uh, you guys are so polite. I'm gonna bring out the first guest because you're good right now and I don't want to lose the energy. Are we, are we on board? Back in the room, thanks, I appreciate that. Look, and I'm like, eh, it's not so much funny as it is. Are we in? Yeah. We're in. You guys are great. Uh, so, like I said, this is such a brilliant room to be able to do as a comedian. So, uh, I hope you, I know you're going to have as good a time as we are. And your first guest, I'm very excited. Uh, give it up uh, for Mr. Clifford Myers, ladies and gentlemen. Clifford Myers. <laughs> Huh? 
touched me. Yeah! She's gross! She's gross! <laughs> this is cool. Welcome. Welcome to my home. Uh, no, this is very nice. Good to be here. Uh, I'm, uh, I, no, I don't normally uh, smoke marijuana. It's not really my thing because uh, I have year-long bronchitis. Don't laugh at my bronchitis, sir. It's a fucking ailment. That's plagued me since the age of five in the wilderness. Listen, <laughs> I can't smoke weed because you want me you doing the puff puff pass thing. We're all in, you know, hanging out in our grandma's basement trying marijuana and shit. And you pass it over and I was like, it's, it makes it awkward for me and everyone because I'm always like. <sighs> noises when I smoke pot. It's weird. Is that a thing? Is that a thing with weed? I don't actually know. This is so good. A bunch of guys is crammed on the couch. There's another couch. That's, that's cool, man. Do your thing. Yeah. Bruh, bruh. Weird. So, I, uh, I'm happy, man. You know, you know I'm happy. I came all the way from Hamilton this evening. Home of the pregnant hooker. Bruh, bruh. Yeah, you guys love Hamilton. You love it, you weirdo. You love it. The girls that are gross have got pimples on their teeth. I don't know. You guys, you guys have amazing fucking dentistry. You do. In Toronto, you guys, let me look at your teeth. Those are good. I love it. You guys all, see, the thing is, is I, went to, I went to a dentist in Hamilton. And that, see, I'm jealous of your teeth, guys. I went to a Hamilton dentist. You're not even gonna believe this. This is what happened. I went in there to this guy, and he takes a piece of string and tied it around my tooth. <laughs> Took the other piece of string and tied it to a doorknob. And then he raped me. Hamilton Dentistry. I love that you're laughing at my bronchitis and rape! What's wrong with you guy in the corner? But I'm a gentle fellow. I'm a gentle man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian man. I uh, threw up in a Portuguese restaurant today. Um, yeah, I, I, I threw up in a Portuguese restaurant. I brought my mom in. I choked on a piece of meat and I threw up. I don't know. Um, I was throwing up on this chair and my mom doesn't know Heimlich maneuver, so she's just rubbing my back. You know? And I thought it was nice because my mom's Portuguese. I wanted to bring her to a Portuguese restaurant and then I threw up everywhere and embarrassed her. And then she had to go explain the whole situation. I just hear her talking in Portuguese to like the Portuguese people. Do you guys know what Portuguese sounds like? Like you just add gish to the end of everything? What the fuck is happening? Are you Portuguese? That's what that fucking smell is! <laughs> I sit in here, I'm like, it smells like fucking fish shit Portugal! You're Portuguese. So my mom, you might be, you're probably my dad. Um, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't have a dad, I don't know. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, that's cool. So th this is awkward for me because I don't speak Portuguese and I'm about to make fun of the language you speak. But, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, I, you guys, you do. You add the gish at the end of everything. Portuguese, gish, gish. Yeah, it's like high-functioning autism, kind of. Right? You don't have to agree. But, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, is I hear my mom talking in Portuguese to the guy that works there. And she just says like little words that make me know that she's talking about me. Because I just hear her, she's like, yes, 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 stand up comedian. Yes, 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 very disappointing. Yes, 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 yes. I, uh, I have a lot to celebrate. I survived my first year of marriage. <laughs> I like that. There's no applause. <laughs> That's great. This girl's looking at me like, oh, the homeless man thinks he's loved. <laughs> I'll kill you. I look less homeless now. I used to have the big curly hair, like the fucking Hagrid going on. I did, I look like fucking Peter Jackson ate a Mumford and Son. It was disgusting. But now I shave my head, I'm going for the fat prison break. 
You like it? Thank you. I think I'm gonna fuck my dad tonight. Wow. I love where this is going. I love you, son. <laughs> oh man, Allison, put him on the list. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> I like my wife. <laughs> I, I don't. I shouldn't have to say this, but I, no, I do. I like her. I like my wife. Um, oddly enough, she's beautiful. I, like every, everyone says this to me. Like they're surprised how did a guy like you get a girl like her? Like they just expect me to fucking marry a literal piece of garbage, just a just a crumpled McDonald's <laughs> cup, and they're, and they're like, yeah, it's my blushing bride. I hope you like this Whopper wrapper. It's my baby. <laughs> But uh, no, she is, she's much more beautiful than I am. She has this long flowing, long flowing brown hair, uh, very much like Jesus. I don't know, just without the beard and wrist holes. She was beautiful. No more. No. You made this weird, not me. Not the fat guy in plaid shorts. You made it weird. You're not supposed to wear shorts to a comedy show when you're on stage. That's Seinfeld's rule. So I don't want you guys to think I'm doing this because I hate Jews. I just like shorts. I just like shorts, Allison. Uh, so <laughs> it's a wild, it's a wild world I live. I guess I'll get into it. I have sex. Don't picture it. Don't. My wife and I, the, the other day, my wife and I, we started, uh, started getting a little hot and heavy. Mainly heavy. And my wife tries something she's not very good at. What is wrong with you? My wife tried talking dirty to me. And my wife's not good at this. You guys have to understand this. She is not good at this. Because my wife turns to me, she's just like, Oh, Clifford. Your body is a wonderland. <laughs> Me, I was just like, baby, why is my body a wonderland? And she just looks at me, just like looks right in my eyes, and she's just like, because I can't find my way out. <laughs> Come on, that's mean, isn't it? That's mean. My wife calls my penis God because she's not sure if it exists. That's mean. You guys are uproarious. Thank you. At least she's not an atheist. What would happen if she was an atheist? <laughs> That's my wife! That, that was her fucking giggle! Don't laugh at this guy! He's an immature hour! What are you doing, babe? I work at this job! My wife never laughs at my fucking jokes ever! I do this shit in the shower with her. I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna come out and talk about my man tits and make fun of a guy in the corner, right? And she's just like, keep scrubbing. Keep scrubbing. You guys are wonderful. Um, I, I would like to say, uh, I guess before I go, um, my mom, a lot of people tell me I look like my mother, which isn't very nice to me because my mom kind of looks like the penguin from Batman. <laughs> it's true, man. It doesn't help that she has that Portuguese accent. Because I'm always like, yo, mom, what's for dinner? And then she's like, wah! <laughs> Power to the people. I am at Cliffalist on Twitter. That is Clifford and Syphilis Mix. Thank you and good night. <laughs> Clifford Myers, ladies and gentlemen. Clifford Myers. There is an ashtray right here. That's the proper egg hit, everyone. That's what I realized. There's an ashtray. I didn't realize I went on about that for two minutes before the show. There's an ashtray right fucking there. That's where you ash. That's the proper etiquette. The shit and the blah, blah, blahs behind me is what's going on. Okay. Great. All right. Dad, so nice of you to come out. That was awesome. You're good. That was good. That was very funny. I'm so glad. All right. This is good. Are you kidding? What a nice... Okay, all right. Uh, I told you before, I spent a lot... <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep talking about it, but I spent a lot of time with old people. This is what's happening. So my 94-year-old grandmother recently, I was in the hospital with her, and the doctor... This is good. She's a good time. 
doctor came in and he had student doctors with him and he's like, do you mind if the student doctors take a look at you? And my grandma was like, oh sure, that one. Okay, never mind. I was like, <laughs> you're attentive though, right? I was like, oh, it's not a fucking audition, grandma. You know what I mean? Like, you don't get to choose out of the seven student doctors. I hope she picks me. You know, I was like, that's not how doctoring works. <laughs> All right, I know, I know, I know. It was a newer one because I don't want to keep giving you the same old shit, right? You deserve to live in the now. So now means a couple of duds. <laughs> See, good giggles. That's great. You're great. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I missed infomercials a great deal. This is what I realized being away from Canada. The Magic Bullet infomercial, I saw that recently and I teared up a little bit. I was like, oh my God, they're still doing it. <laughs> All right, like I'm making pancakes and soup all within four minutes. I love the magic bullet, are you kidding me? Two Christmases ago, I decided everyone in my family would get <laughs> Christmas gifts that were infomercials, everyone. Very easy for the girls, not so easy for the guys. There weren't a lot of like <laughs> infomercial products targeted at dudes, except for one. Uh, it was a pill. It's called Extends. It was that big year. Yeah, it was that big explosion, the Extends year. It's a penile enhancement product. Penile enhancement with a money back guarantee, which I thought was fucking hilarious. Is that necessary? What guy's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, if I could sign his name to that letter, you know? No dude's gonna be like, yeah, I wanted a wang, still with a dinky, you know what I mean? Like, uh, guaranteed men four inches, four fucking inches. I was like, oh my God, if you need to add four inches to your penis, you have a vagina. Good, all right, that's good. Okay, I think we're good, that's great. Okay, I'm gonna bring out your next guest. Are we ready? Your next guest, you're solid. You wooed, thanks for the woos. Yeah, there were woos. See, woo, woo is way easier. Woo, woo, and it sounds rowdy. Woo, woo. Thanks, see, if dad'll do it. My daughter's gonna do it. I know, your daughter's here. Okay, uh, you're the dad I always wanted. Okay, I'm sorry, too emotional, way too emotional. You nodded at me, you were like, yeah, you fucking bet it is. Like, we don't need to talk about that shit right now. <laughs> don't get into self-help shit. <laughs> right, I won't. I'm a self-defeatist, but I'm no fucking good at it. All right. Uh, again, too wordy. Thank you very much. Yeah, I got the light. All right, I get you. Bring out the next fucking guest. All right, everyone. Your next guest. Uh, you're going to woo, you're going to applaud, you're going to love it. Give it up for Mr. Kirk Jorgensen, ladies and gentlemen. Kirk Jorgensen. <laughs> Thank you, it's good to be here. Welcome to the show. I almost didn't make it tonight. I had to cancel an appointment with my reverse psychologist. He said it was okay and that I don't really need his help. Thank you for telling them to laugh at that. Could you do that after every joke? Oh, I shouldn't have said that, never mind. I regret that already. A uh, little bit about me, I'm a stay-at-home boyfriend. Thank you. You guys ever get that feeling that's like, I am not nearly drunk enough for this. Yeah, I had that on the way to work this morning. They say to dress for the job you want so I go to all my interviews dressed as a matador. Thank you. <laughs> Trying to be cool. I think if you play an instrument, you're automatically cool. Unless that instrument is the triangle. I used to play triangle, but I got really fucking good. So now I play the square. Very proud to say I recently adopted a cup of coffee. Cost me just the price of a small African child per day. Thank you, it's good to be here. 
Performing with a heavy heart tonight, um, a good friend of mine overdosed on placebos. Don't worry, it's not actually that bad. He just thought it was. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. Unless you're cross-eyed, then you just get a view of a brick wall in a bad neighborhood. Went to my barber and he's like, uh, what can I do for you today? And I said the same thing you always do. Make me look like an idiot. And then stare at me as I awkwardly decide not to tip you. Oh man, I had uh, really bad gas on the bus ride down here. But judging by the smell of the bus, so did everybody else. If you're Christian and you have internet, God is testing you. At this point, I wouldn't say my computer has a virus. I would say it is a virus. Thank you for the one clap. It's much appreciated. I was thinking about it and if heaven is anything like church, I'm not interested. Pretty, uh, I'm pretty lazy. I can never get around to changing light bulbs. So in the meantime, I've just stopped using my kitchen. I've been eating a lot of uh, peanut butter sandwiches lately. Thank God I don't have allergies. Being poor would be so much harder. Anaphylaxis is a rich man's game. I've been camping outside of Weight Watchers eating cake. I've got a lot of free time and good karma to burn. I want to learn another language just so I can avoid conversations better. Oh, sorry, I'd love to talk, but I don't speak English anymore. C'est la vie. I'm no good with names. There's so many to remember. I don't see how I'm accountable for remembering the full names of both people who raised me. I think that's asking a lot. I've had the same password to my email account for 13 years. <laughs> and sometimes I still misspell it. Come on, Hotmail, haven't I earned your trust? It's me, man, I swear. If someone's trying to hack my password and misses by a letter, fuck it, let them in. They're welcome to peruse my inbox full of outdated office humor forwarded by my dad. The thing I don't like about dancing is all the like grinding and gyrating and I just wish we did something else for that family reunion. <laughs> Thank you, it's good to be here. I just wanna lose enough weight to look good in a dress. That's weird. My, uh, my favorite band was in town, but I didn't go because I have really shitty taste in music. I have, uh, I have scared my girlfriend out of ever wanting to have kids with me just by subtly implying how much I love the name Kanye. Guys, I am like, uh, I am totally OCD. Like if I'm buying eggs and there's a broken one in the carton, I have to kill 11 chickens. There's no masculine way to put on chapstick. If I weren't so insecure, I would have moist, soft, 
luscious, dick-sucking lips. That's another weird one. Whenever somebody asks me what my zodiac sign is, I usually just say herpes. I don't mean to brag, but I've been told I have a penis for radio. You guys know those people with two different colored eyes? They'll have like a brown eye and a blue eye? My ex-girlfriend was like that, but with nipples. She could see with her nipples. It took a lot of spray paint, but I finally made love to a black woman. Thank you very much for that rolling applause break. I'm Kirk Jorgensen. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Kirk Jorgensen, ladies and gentlemen. Kirk Jorgensen. This microphone stand is amazing. Look at that. Fucking that shit does not happen that easy all that often. That is great. Looking on the plus side. That's all I'm saying. Smoke to look on the plus side, everyone. Uh, yeah, woo, thanks. It's great. That's all I got. That's all I got. Oh, yeah. I, I, okay, one story. I did start a story. Uh, so I got off a Greyhound bus. Remember that story? That went nowhere. That went nowhere. Got off a Greyhound bus, kind of blended in with a group of teenagers so I could smoke a joint. The teenagers dispersed. All of a sudden, a cop comes around the corner, and he was like, this is in Vancouver. He goes, excuse me, ma'am. Think you're smoking something you shouldn't be smoking. I was like, oh, I've been on the Greyhound for 10 hours. I think I'm smoking exactly what I should be smoking. <laughs> he looked me right in the eye. He was like, okay. <laughs> I walked off. So it's not that it's wrong, everyone, but it's just, we're in Canada! Okay, your next guest. Uh, one of my favorites, and uh, you, this is your room. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad he's here, everyone. You've been so great. You're gonna love this. Uh, give it up for our next guest, K. Trevor Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. K. Trevor Wilson! Allison Smith, everyone. Give it up for Allison. Stepping up and hosting the show. She didn't even know she was going to be the host. Just because no one knows where Brian O'Gorman is right now. <laughs> Last I heard, he was on his way to Singapore. and That's the last I heard. So, good times, you guys. Good times. I got my trusty water with me, because if I don't have water with me on this stage... I will get wicked pasties just standing here inhaling all of your secondhand smoke. <laughs> I haven't smoked weed today, so I can, well, that's a lie. Uh, I haven't smoked weed since I most recently woke up. Uh, <laughs> technically, I did smoke weed earlier in this calendar day but it was before I, I fell asleep at some point. <laughs> it was early in the morning after several Arrested Development episodes on Netflix. Because I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to catch up. Like Netflix has become a dangerous addiction for me. I'm just like, I didn't even know I wanted to watch 17 episodes of that show, but here I am, wasting another day Plowed through another season of How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> All I can tell you from watching that show is the lead actor in that show, least interesting part of that show. <laughs> and I still don't understand why Bob Saget is his voice. <laughs> He's already a grown up. He's not going to 
later turn into Bob Saget. He's just gonna be old Josh Radner. See, it made sense in the Wonder Years when Fred Savage was 10 and Daniel Stern was his voice. We didn't know that Fred Savage wasn't go, gonna go grow up into Daniel Stern. And actually, none of us really knew what Daniel Stern looked like till the Home Alone movies. And then we were like, no, he's probably not gonna turn into that guy. That's a weird looking guy. I'm just saying it's weird. This is what I've noticed watching Netflix in my underpants. Pissing off my roommates because it's a common room. I should really be wearing pants in that room. <laughs> I'm just waiting for them to have the courage to say something about it. I'm very big, I get away with a lot of shit. I want them to put on pants, but I also don't want to anger the 300 pound man on my couch. He's napping through another episode of How I Met Your Mother. Good times, you guys, good times. I, uh, I literally just got here. Uh, I walked in the door and they said, you're going on, and I said, great. And I grabbed a water. So I'm actually thinking of jokes while I talk to you. Uh, I know the jokes, I just don't know which ones I was going to tell today. I hadn't put much thought into that. I found out uh, I'm very popular in the gay community. Uh, specific, uh, specific branch of the gay community. I have a, a lot of, of uh, fans and followers who are part of the North American Bear Association. Because uh, apparently I fit the criteria of a sexy bear. I'm big and I'm hairy. And I wear a lot of plaid. Uh, when I was younger, I attended a, a theater art school, and uh, because of that, a lot of people made fun of me and called me gay for going to an art school. So I was like, well, I'm going to foster a look that will turn away all those gay comparisons and adopted the burly man look, only then to find out that no, I am now just a very specific type of gay. <laughs> I'm starting to doubt whether they're very interested in what I have to say or whether they just want to see more shirtless cottage pictures because that seems to be when, uh, when my Facebook explodes, when I post topless pics. I'm on several bear appreciation websites. I've, uh, I cornered the market of playing shirtless fat guys uh, for a couple years in TV's things. I did uh, the movie Score the Hockey Musical a couple years ago. And my role in that was the uh, shirtless hockey fan with the team colors painted on his chest. Uh, my character's name was Fat Bellied Man. That's on my resume. That's, uh, and my IMDB page. That's something I brag about. Uh, I didn't even audition for the role. They just gave it to me. Uh, normally there's a lot of stupid auditions even for a role that small, but I just got a call one day from my agent saying, can you be shirtless and fat on a Thursday? I was like, Mary, all I need is Thursday. I am two steps ahead of you right now. It was a fun role to do because I got to spend the day hanging out with Nelly Furtado, the international singing sensation. And she's very nice, sweet girl, very small, tiny. Uh, my friends had a lot of stupid questions after I worked with Nelly, and the dumbest being, uh, so is, is Nelly Furtado hot? It's like, uh, you have a TV, and she's been on it. You know what she looks like. She's Nelly Furtado. They're like, yeah, yeah, but she's hot on TV, but is she hot in real life? Of course she is. It's not, what do you think happens in movies? The, they yell cut and she peels off a rubber mask like the end of a Scooby-Doo episode? No, she's Nelly Furtado, she's gorgeous. She's, she looks like something out of an epic Gresham poem. You feel like you have to slay the serpent at Pythus in order to impress her. She's that kind of good looking. 
She's the kind of good looking that makes me doubt we're from the same species. She is super hot, and I look like something that should be researched at the Jane Goodall Institute. <laughs> Granted, I'll give myself that I'm on the handsomer side of ogreish, but I am a man who has twice been mistaken for a bear. And this time I don't mean the gay dude, I actually mean the woodland creature. Funny for you guys, you never spent a camping trip picking buckshot out of your ass. It's a great way to ruin a camping trip. My one buddy had a stupid, stupid comment uh, about Nelly Furtado. He was like, oh, I guess she's hot, but my girlfriend met her once and she said her ass is too big. That's insane for two reasons. One, asses haven't been too big since 1993, when Sir Mix-a-Lot taught us all to love big butts. But number two, my buddy's girlfriend looks like Chuck Liddell. So guess who's not allowed to have an opinion? The muscular woman with a mohawk and a goatee. You can just keep it to yourself. All right, you guys have been a ton of fun. I'm going to keep uh, this going and bring Allison back up. Have a great night, guys. High 24 like Keeper. I tell him don't hit too hard. This is a creeper. Woody Hamilton is down with us. Bruce Willis smokes hard. He's down with us. Yeah, Willie Nelson is down with us. K. Trevor Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Thank you so much for showing up. He literally showed up. We were like, could you? What are you doing? Can you go into a room and tell some jokes last minute to a bunch? All right, we're so glad. Yay, thank you, Kay Trevor. Uh, so now, uh, I'm a traditionalist, and uh, usually this is the point where uh, Brian hosts a bong hit and dance off, and the winner gets a brand new bong. Yeah, so, so, uh, I'm wondering if there's anyone who uh, would like to, um, we, we usually get a guy and a girl, and I guess there's a dance-off. I don't know, uh, yeah, like there is, there's a dance-off, there's a dance-off. I just feel uncomfortable, because I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to host a fucking dance-off. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I've never done this, and I'm fucking terrified. So what I'm asking, is for a guy and a girl to come up on stage with me and dance and do a, a bong. Come on. We need, we, yeah, is there anyone who would like to? Yeah, we've got one at the back. Yeah, it could be anyone. It could be anyone. It's open. I don't mean to make it a guy-girl thing. I haven't been here for a while. It's probably pretty fucking open. Come on, don't He's the only one who wants to rock it. Ball. Here's what I say. Here's what I say. I know traditionally there's a competition, but here's my fucking vote. I was thinking about this at the back because I'm like, oh, God, I got to host a dance off. If you want to dance and you want to bong, we want to see it. And just go into it knowing you got a fucking bong, buddy. Like, just... Show us what you fucking got. I want to see you. Yeah, yeah, are you kidding? This is the best ever. All right, so start up the music. What, is it going to happen? Yeah, he, look at it. He's not going to throw down unless there's a competitor. Oh, we got one at the back. Oh, my God. Fucking, yeah, it's 8 Mile. I was so scared. It was never going to happen for me. Bless. Uh, yeah. All right, so the music's gonna start. Uh, you can begin, yeah? And then, uh, and then there's a moment, and then we'll have our second competitor, and then we'll do a quick vote, solid. So whenever you're ready with the music. Yeah. Yeah. 
solid. Contestant number one, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent. Solid. Contestant number two. Ready whenever you are with the music. Yeah. Test number two, ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right, so we'll do it really fast. Uh, yeah, let's all stay up here really quick, we'll do this. This is how they usually do it, right? This is final moments. All right, so for the winner, I should probably be the one holding it right now. I did say it was essentially yours. But you fucking pulled out some popping and locking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the audience, for a free bong. Give it up for contestant number one, please. Contestant number one. Solid. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, contestant number two. Yeah. The crowd has spoken. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Solid. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been quite a show for me. I want you all to know that. I hope it has been a show for you. Have you had quite a show? Yeah, you're good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now to our final act, our closing act, our headline act. Uh, I'm excited to be able to bring him to the stage. He's a very good friend of mine. He's very funny, originally from Nova Scotia. Uh, but now lives and makes his home in Toronto. Give it up for my good friend, Mr. Mark Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Bennett. Allison, Allison Smith, everybody. Hey, Allison. Woo-hoo. Fuck's sake. Allison, uh, she just said, we're really good friends. And then she announced me from Nova Scotia, but I'm from Newfoundland. Come on, Allison. But she's high as a kite, so we'll forgive her. We'll forgive her. Holy fuck, that was, a, that was a crazy dance contest, eh? We got, the, we, got the, we got the Chris Angel guy doing the fucking pose off. Ah, and, then, and then fucking, and then like, well, what's next? And then Usher comes up and breaks it out, and fucking just smooth as silk. That was a weird contest. If it had been a, if it had been a bong contest for this, that guy would have fucking killed it. But no, no, he didn't. He won my heart, though, you know? He won... He won my fucking heart. <laughs> he did. <laughs> you guys are nice. You guys are nice. Yes, originally from Newfoundland. I uh, haven't been home. Haven't been home in a very long time. Last time I was home in Newfoundland, it was for a shitty reason. It was for a funeral. And we all hate funerals, but here's something we got to stop doing at the funeral. That's the open casket. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Everyone says the same stupid fucking thing. They're like, doesn't he look great? <laughs> No, dude, he does not. In fact, I've never seen him look worse. He's dead, you see. That's why when I die, I swear to God, I'm just gonna pay a male model to lie in there shirtless. You know? Mark looks fucking excellent. Was he always Mexican? He's a good looking Mexican. Yeah. And Clifford, Clifford was talking about uh, that your body is a wonderland, that, uh, that John Mayer, that fucking... Does anyone like John Mayer? Anyone? No? No, of course not. Did you have taste? No fucking John. I hate John Mayer. Hey, that, that singing style. Your body is a... What? That is whispering. That is not singing. It's whispering. But my wife, she dragged me to a John Mayer concert. We, we had free tickets uh, here in Toronto, so we went to the concert. Now, something interesting did actually happen at the concert. There's this young girl down in the front row, she holds up a big sign, and the sign says, never been kissed. So John Mayer actually got down off the stage and gave her a little kiss. Yeah, I thought that was actually kind of sweet. Like her first ever kiss, you know? Gave her herpes, so that's nice, you know? <laughs> Something to remember him by, but Christ, if that shit works, I'm gonna go to the next Beyonce concert. Never had a blowjob. We'll see what happens. <laughs> because I am ready. 
for her jelly. Yeah, yeah, friggin' wife. Got the wife. Uh, I'm uh, wearing, uh, wearing the ring. We're just recently married. I'm wearing the ring tonight. I normally, I don't wear the ring. Uh, and the reason I don't wear it is because my wife doesn't want me to. That's a little bit weird. She said, rings don't suit you. It's kind of like, yeah, I'll marry you, but let's not broadcast this shit. You know, I have a fucking reputation to maintain, but it's no wonder why she's worried about me because she's finding out as days go by that I'm not a good man. I'm not good at being a man. I don't know how to do shit. I don't know how to fix shit. I, do, I just stand here and tell poo jokes. That's all I can do. And my wife, so th this, this really happened to us. Uh, we're, we're in bed. Uh, we're trying to sleep, and, and there's a big bang out in the living room. Now, uh, so my wife gets scared. Now, so it, it was just a picture frame that had fallen down in the living room. But uh, my wife, she gets all frightened, and she says, oh, Mark, go, go do something. And this is what I do. I stick my head out into the hallway, and I go, hello? <laughs> you might as well just say, I'm scared. And it's not the reaction of a Navy SEAL in that situation. And the thing is, it's the exact opposite of what my dad would do. Because my dad, uh, home in Newfoundland, he's like the toughest old Newfie bastard in the world. And, uh, and so he would always, my dad, my dad would always sleep uh, naked. Uh, well, I should back it up and tell you, my dad only has the one leg. He lost uh, his right leg in, in an accident when he was young. So he only has the one leg, so he sleeps naked, you know, because the underwear would just slide off the thing there. So he just, this is, this is all a true story, by the way, and he's okay with it. So he just... He sleeps naked in the bed uh, with, a big, with a big baseball bat next to the bed. And there was a couple of times he thought people were breaking into the house in Newfoundland. No one ever was, but he thought a couple of times they were. So he would just grab the bat and just start hopping down the hallway. Now that is how you scare the shit out of a criminal right there. You're like, what the fuck was that? It had a bat and a leg and a dick? Holy shit. <laughs> Fucking messed up. Yeah, but yeah, I uh, trying to get my uh, trying to get my shit together. I'm trying to get my shit together. So I went. Uh, well, cause cause uh, I'm not a successful uh, person. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, but I'm headlining Weedy Wednesdays. So uh, I am not what you call the guy who's making a billion dollars at comedy. And uh, so I, I figured I, I got to put a stop to this. Right. So I, I finally broke down and I went to see a therapist. Uh, and this girl says, uh, she said, what's been holding me back is a combination of, uh, of OCD and uh, ADHD. And, uh, and she said, oh, do you know who is suffering with that is uh, Justin Timberlake. It's like, really? Justin, is he suffering? Is he suffering with that? The millions of dollars he has and he's banging Jessica Biel every night. Is he really suffering? He's <laughs> dancing his way out of my fucking condition. But um, yes, yeah, so there's not much you can do. All you can do is write some lists. You can write some lists and then you can take a pill uh, that helps you focus. That, that's all you can do. And except that uh, the pill, there's no real side effects with the exception of one, and that side effect is you will uh, increase your suicidal thoughts. So that's great. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll want to commit suicide, but you'll be really focused on the fucking task. There's no forgetting the rope this time, my friend. But, yeah. but I don't know. Got to get my shit together because my, uh, my wife... My wife, uh, she wants to have kids. She wants to have kids, the wife does. Oh, and well, first, I, mean, I should say this. We actually, we're okay now, but we got into a really big fight, me and the wife, uh, a couple weeks ago. Really big fight. Uh, what happened was this girl walked past me and I looked at her boobs. That's what I do. I'm a man. I look at boobs. You, I've looked down your shirt like five times since I've been up here. I appreciate it. I'm glad you brought that thing. It was nice. But the thing is, I can't help it. Psychologists have proven that I can't help but look down your shirt and all of your shirts. This is what I'm doing. And the reason is, psychologists say they studied the male brain and when boobs cross the man's field of vision, a little impulse fires off in his brain, a little synapse. That impulse is, you should procreate, you should have a baby. But the guy doesn't know that, he just goes, boobs. And women have the exact same impulse in their brains. But it's not when they see boobs, it's when they see an actual little baby. And that shit is not fair at all, you know? Because when my wife sees a little baby and says, oh my God, how cute, I don't say, you're a dirty fucking pervert. <laughs> you should only look at my babies. Why aren't my babies good enough for you? She does, she wants to have kids. Wife wants to have kids. And so she tells me this one, drinking the water. 
She tells me that in order to increase our chances for having kids, for me, there is uh, no beers, no warm baths, and um, no touching myself. I'm like, oh, you know I love getting drunk and whacking off in the pool. What am I supposed to do on Public Swim Thursdays? Ruins my week. No, we are. We're having trouble having the kids, so I had to go to a fertility clinic, get my junk tested. And that's weird, fertility clinic. You can do it one of two ways. You can uh, either do it at home and, and then bring it on in, uh, or you can do it at the clinic itself. So my wife said, wow, well, you should do it in the comfort of your own home and bring it on in. But I had all these daydreams of being on the TTC with a vial of that shit, you know, and the cops stopping me, local comedian terrorizes Toronto when he took his sperm out for a walk. So I said, fuck it. You know, I'm just gonna, I'll just do it at the clinic. And that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Cause you, you gotta ask all those uncomfortable questions, you know, like which nurse's face do I point to that? Stuff like that. No, you didn't. I just thought it in my brain. I didn't ask. The question. But the thing is, they, re they really don't give you a lot of direction. They just give you a cup and then they send you down a hallway that has a bunch of doors. So you have all these dudes just walking around trying not to make eye contact with one another. And this, so this really happened to me. I'm in there, I'm, I'm doing my thing, and some dude is just knocking on the door going, ah, hello. It's like, I had flashbacks to when I was 13. I'm like, I'm just brushing my teeth. <laughs> Fuck's sakes. But yeah, I like it. I like being married. I like it, like Clifford's saying, it's good, you know? Like, a lot, of, a lot of comedians rip on being married. I think it's awesome. Me and my wife, we're a team. We're a team now. We fucking hate everybody together. It is fantastic. We, we call people over just to talk about them when they leave. We're like, bye, thanks for bringing the wine. Did you see what that bitch was wearing? And we high five and have sex. It's nice. It's good though. A lot better than my last relationship. Me and my ex, we broke up because we were different. Different people. You know, like I liked watching old movies. She liked fucking other guys, so we were different in that respect. Asking, she always asked me these stupid questions, right, that she couldn't answer honestly. One time she turned to me, she said, hey, do you think about me when you masturbate? And I said, well, sometimes I think, I hope she doesn't come in right now. Hmm? And there are other times I think I wish she would leave so that I could masturbate, does that count? Hmm? One of the comics was, talking about talking dirty. This chick, she literally, she wanted me uh, to talk dirty to her one night uh, in the voice uh, of a very famous character, because comedians often do impressions, you know? So, now talking dirty, that can be awkward enough, right? But when you're saying things like, you make me so horny. It's a whole new level of weird right there. Word of advice for the fellas. Don't call her Miss Piggy. She doesn't like that shit. She doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. The wife likes Paris, because she can speak French, so she likes going to Paris. And you can see all the boobies in Paris. It's fantastic to the fellas, I recommend it. Go to, go to the south of France, see some boobs, you know, because we really, we're way too uptight about nudity in North America, way too uptight. This is a real law in Montana. In, uh, in Montana, third offense for skinny dipping is life in prison. Life in prison, so you could be in a cell with a sociopath who's killed 15 people. He's like, hey man, what'd you do? I showed my bum in public. Now you're gonna show your bum in here because it's prison, he would say. Pass the Vaseline, perhaps, he would say. But he wouldn't say that because Mad Dog does not care about your comfort. No. <laughs> he doesn't, he's just gonna ram it right in there. No, but that's the thing, I mean, they, they just, in France, they are so cool with that shit. You could literally be having sex in the Louvre in front of the Mona Lisa and the cops would be like, hey, hey. Why aren't you smoking, ah? <laughs> Do it doggy style, you can both see the picture, it's nice. He's a nice. But yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to be out in the fucking dating scene. Thought it was tough, do we have any people who date here by applause, any daters? <laughs> no, we're all single and lonely. Mm. I fucking hated dating, I hated, I hated dating. And uh, I was always confused by it. So one of my friends, she was trying to help me out, so she said, <laughs> She said when she's looking for a man, she goes, you can tell how good a man is at making love by the way he picks out fruit. I thought that was a little bit stupid at first, but then I noticed, you know what? Maybe she has a point. Anytime I'm in the grocery store, you know, in the fruit section, it's true. I'll walk over to a pear, you know, I'll pick it up. I'll squeeze it a little bit, you know, and then I uh, prematurely ejaculate. So she's right, she's right. 
And ladies and gentlemen, thanks for hanging in there. This has been a great show, and I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. My good friend Mark Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. That was his first time being here. All right. How many other people? First time? You had a good time? This is a good time, is it not? How many people? First timers? Okay, people who have been before? All right. Everyone together. Yeah, only place in the world it happens. Thank you so much uh, for coming out and supporting live comedy and uh, for being you. I think we all know what that means. Making the right choices and being here on a Wednesday night is what I mean by that, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out and supporting Weedy Wednesday. Uh, one more big hand for everyone that you saw on the show this evening. All right, one more time. Clifford Myers. Yeah. Kirk Jorgensen. K. Trevor Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. But your headline act, my good friend, his first time here, I'm so glad, the hilarious Mr. Mark Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you for coming out. Enjoy the rest of your night. I've been Allison. Bye.